Uh, hi, dear colleagues. We will be talking about the case at Anadolu University. So I'm now starting our presentation. So if, in case there is any problem, please write us a message so that we can understand that. Uh, of course, for the two days, this group has been talking and discussing about blended learning. There are some different uh, explanations, definitions made for blended learning. Uh, Anadolu University, we would like to start with saying, is a uh, blended university, a dual mode university, first of all, having both conventional face to face on campus students and off campus distance education students. So we have uh, both conventional and distance degree programs, two year and four year programs, and also certificate programs. And um, uh, we are using blended mm -hmm. learning for supporting the face-to-face -face classes in class education uh, for the on-campus students using our learning management system, Anadolu eCampus we call it. And in this sense, in the classical definition of blended learning, we are supporting the in-class education with uh, e-learning uh, media uh, environment. Uh, and also, uh, in our open education system, on the other hand, uh, we have more traditional means of distance education, but this time blended with e-learning. Uh, having the e-learning environment as a active environment for the learners. Uh, so the open education system, student support services, both the academic and the administrative services, are done both face-to-face -face at the local bureaus and at some learning centers for face-to-face -face classes, tutoring and mentoring in this sense. And at the same time, via the e-learning environment that we call as e-campus. Uh, if we have a look at Anadolu in blended learning, in e-learning, uh, in, in terms of face-to-face, -face, we have nine faculties. Uh, there we can see in-class presence of the learners, and supported with the e-learning environment. In the case of distance education, open education system, we have three faculties where we have distance education supported by e-learning media. And um, when we say that we make this distinction between face-to-face -face and distance, of course, uh, there are the same programs same uh, level of education here. And uh, since in Turkey, of course, the uh, diplomas of these programs are accepted equal. as equivalent. And this is why only the means utilized for education change when we uh, talk about this blended learning at Anadolu University. This is also important in terms of quality, Absolutely. in meeting the quality standards and the, uh, of course, um, learner outcomes yes. for these programs. Uh, I think it is possible to say that uh, two types of blended learning is uh, available in another university. We mean that in three distance education faculty, the distance education supported by face-to-face -face education, but in nine faculties, face-to-face -face education supported by distance education. Right. Uh, we mean the face-to-face -face dominant faculties, uh, but three of faculties of another university are dominant in distance education. Yeah, can go on. Uh, of course, there are, uh, how do we use these services and how do we support the students? We have live online classes, we have webinars for them, for the open education system, I mean, and face-to-face -face for some of the courses. Uh, we meet at the learning centers with the students, the tutors and the learners come together face-to-face. -face. Academic counseling services, we generally use the e-learning environment and the discussion forums uh, such media for the academic counseling about um, some uh, ideas we give to the students uh, as the prospective graduates of our program. And in terms of quality assurance, uh, we get feedback from the students, from the learners. Uh, we have a project uh, about our e-learning environment and call our students that give us feedback as quality yes, ambassadors yes. and they give us feedback about this uh, communication uh, between the institution and the learners. The e-learning 
Welcome again, welcome to Anadolu University. As I told you before, it's Anadolu eCampus Learning Management System, and here there is a wide spectrum of learning materials in the digital format. There are the synchronous online classes, we call them as webinars. We have videos, worksheets, summaries, exercises, previous exam questions, a supportive material for students, and also we have asynchronous interaction with the tutors and discussion forums. So this is the general characteristic of the environment we use uh, to uh, have interaction with our, with our students. And as the theme of our, uh, of course, presentation, uh, there is a large diversity Absolutely. also, diversity of learners in the open education system at Anadolu University. And a high number of students, as also Angela's told. Uh, so this we will now uh, be trying to give you some information uh, about this diversity and how Anadolu uh, tries to meet that challenge. Yes, thanks to Dr. Elif Toprak. And uh, the, the main question of this presentation is uh, how to uh, provide uh, different services, educational services, student support services to uh, different uh, demographic backgrounds of students. So, the learning demographics have a wide range of difference in massive education systems like Anadolu University. This means that disadvantaged groups, we have disadvantaged groups, disabled learners, we mean digital skills groups, different socio-economical socio, uh, socio levels, different learning styles, digital divide, and etc. In these cases, ODI should be accessible for all learning groups with diversity in learning environments, in learning materials, in media types, in student support services, in blended learning opportunities, and assessment types. In another university open education system as a mega university aims to provide this diversity uh, to 1.2 million students from uh, 36 countries. Students are from different countries and have a different background, so uh, needs different uh, tools and environments and student support services. For the first step, in all this diversity, uh, the programs should be in different levels and have a wide range of diversity. Uh, for example, at Anadolu University, uh, we have a new platform named an uh, academia. In this MOOC platform, we have 60 programs. In each of programs, we have 107 uh, different programs. In undergraduate program, programs, we have uh, 41 different programs. In graduate, uh, 19 programs. And in non thesis master degree programs, we have uh, 18 different programs. So the program diversity uh, required for different backgrounds of students. Uh, when we look at the learning materials at Anadolu University, uh, not only for diversity but also for accessibility and flexibility, uh, the different learning uh, demographic information require different type of learning materials, different type of uh, student support. In another university, as you see on the, the screen, uh, the out, they have different kind of audio books, interactive videos, uh, summaries, practice tests, worksheets, chapter summaries, e-seminars, questions and questions and answers applications. Uh, it means that the disadvantaged groups and other uh, learners with different backgrounds can access the higher education and can access the educational content with different uh, through different tools and environments. The purpose, there's a wide spectrum of learning materials at Anadolu University. I just listed the, the different type of materials. Uh, all these materials should be up to date, should be in different media type and should be provided in the, uh, through different channels. We mean the website LMS is accessible on uh, PC, yes, but uh, students uh, should have a chance to access all these learning materials through mobile applications. For this purpose, Anadolu University provides mobile applications to all students to access 
different kind of materials to mobile applications. When we look at the uh, blended part of open education system, uh, as we uh, mentioned at the start of the presentation, uh, open education system is distance education dominant blended learning system. So all these distance education tools and environments are supported by face-to-face -face, uh, projects. Uh, we mean live online courses through webinars, academic counseling through our bureaus in face-to-face -face in, in 107 different bureaus, not only in Turkey, but also in, in Germany and in, in uh, Azerbaijan, in Cyprus and in different countries. And face-to-face -face teaching, we have also face-to-face -face classes plus at the different universities, in regional universities. We mean in another part of Turkey, we, we have a collaboration with face-to-face -face universities and students can go and take their courses in face-to-face -face education. And we have student quality ambassadors that Dr. Toprak uh, already mentioned. Uh, these ambassadors uh, are very important in uh, blended learning processes uh, in means of giving feedback to the system to develop uh, the required limitations. And finally, in student support services, uh, if you have uh, over than one million students and if you have different backgrounds uh, for your learners, uh, I mean, your learner can be a disadvantaged person, can be blind, or uh, can be uh, a student that do not have high-speed internet connection, or uh, have different kind of uh, access problem problems. Uh, your student support services also should should be uh, provided through different ways. Uh, here is some examples of student support services of Anadolu University Open Education System. The, here are the most fre frequently uh, answered questions and topics that uh, received from the uh, statistics of the student support web platform. Uh, open Education System, they, they want to, to, to learn the, 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 the uh, structure of the system, uh, they want to learn the exam processes, enrollment processes, student services, Anadolu e-campus e -campus support, and uh, the second university, uh, as you know, we, we have at the Turkey, we have second university option uh, for, for, for lifelong learning. Uh, so here are the topics that the students uh, frequently mentioned uh, at our student support uh, bureaus and student support services. And finally, as we mentioned before, we can uh, underline that the diversity of target, target group, the diversity of uh, services at open education systems. And yes, we finalized our presentation. If you have any question, we will be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I you. Yeah. Okay, because I, I don't see the buttons uh, for the administration. So, thank you very much, Elif and, and Mehmet, and sorry for uh, the problems, the technical problems we, we have along your presentation. Anyway, we could hear you perfectly well, although we couldn't see you. Um, I think another is um, it's a well quite huge university and this. Well, it means that uh, the organization of uh, all the student support is very complicated and, and you have a lot of things, as you have presented, that are quite in necessary for the students. I, I don't know if there is any a question or comment to them. I only would like to, to ask you if you know in, in terms of how many of your students do really go to face-to-face uh, -to -face tutoring, I mean, if they still go um, very much to, to the local support centers or if they are moving towards the online support and using it uh, more frequently. Because, uh, I don't know if it's compulsory or not to go to the local centers to receive 
uh, the tutor support, or is just something that voluntarily on a voluntarily basis the uh, the student uh, uh, takes or not? In terms, first of all, as you said, yeah, it's on voluntary basis whether to attend to the face-to-face -face courses, yeah. the academic counseling sessions or not. And even if using the e-learning platform also is uh, optional. But it is possible to say that in local or local bureaus, all students take the face-to-face -face support from our bureaus mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. at least at least two times each semester in uh, taking the course processes and the profile update yeah. and in examination by the three years and three times. Yeah. For administrative issues, they have to go to the students. Absolutely. But for academic counseling, for the academic sessions and classes, it's up to them to prefer to go to the classes or not. And on the other hand, we also have a face-to-face uh, classrooms also at uh, different universities. The numbers was uh, for last year uh, it was about uh, four thousand persons uh, uh, have been uh, in these face-to-face -face classroom, but the numbers was limited just because of this reason. Uh, we, we just uh, start to decrease um, yeah, the numbers. There was a very high interest. <laughs> because they are online in all, yeah. in all time. After the use of the LMS, eCampus Anadolu, yeah. uh, the interest to face-to-face -face, uh, sessions really decreased. Yeah. That's why this academic year, a decision was made to decrease the number of the learning right. centers yeah. for face-to-face -face classes. So e-learning is taking the place of face-to-face -face academic counseling mm -hmm. in the system. There is such a transition in our case. It also comes to us a very interesting situation, but the penalty was, was just like that. Okay, thank you very much. There is only one, one question here uh, about mentoring. Who are the mentors? How does it work? Uh, Maria Spilker. Who are the mentors? The staff at the learning yeah. centers are the mentors for Absolutely. our learners, distance learners. Uh, they have a long time experience in, in open education system, about 20 years and 30 years, and uh, they know all process of administration of students and student support services. Uh, they give mentoring face to face in local, uh, in, in, in cities and in, uh, in the And they also look like call centers. They also answer questions uh, through telephone. Yeah, it's also call center by, by phone. And uh, also the person who gave the mentoring through the phone is also bureau uh, uh, staff. So at learner centers, we can say the mentoring, uh, the main responsible people are at the learning centers, but also through the e-learning platform, the academicians at the university also asynchronously answer the questions and try to guide our learners. Okay. Because besides all the guiding materials yeah. that provided in the web environment, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We are all on the right. Well, well, we have to, to finish because we don't have so much time left. Although um, I, I well, I will ask you to just wait a little bit more for uh, the presentation of Jose Vidarra. Uh, although we are going to finish uh, well a little bit later, but uh, well, uh, I think it's uh, a very interesting session. So please stay with us a little bit more. Uh, Jose Vidora, I cannot present you as I did uh, with uh, our first uh, speakers because I don't have the presentation slides. But uh, thank you very much for accepting to be with us this afternoon. Jose is uh, from the Universidade Aberta de Portugal and he's a researcher in, and, and professor in Aberta of Portugal. And he's going to present about digital media arts in open and distance education uh, under blended learning perspective. So, I cannot see you, but I hope to, to be able to listen to you, Jose, and well, the floor is yours, and you can start your presentation. Thank you, Ares, and uh, thank you to the EADU also for inviting me, 
and uh, I hope you are listening uh, without any problems now. Are you? Yes. Are you? I'm coming through. Yeah. Yes. No problem. Okay. All right. So uh, this is about digital media arts in open and distance education, and this is a very specific case. So I'm going to tell you about uh, a, a, an experiment and a way of uh, tr transforming a PhD program. I'm going to set the context first. So this uh, this PhD program is based on a research center that is not only in Portugal, in, in Lisbon, in Universidade Aberta, it's also at the University of Algarve. Uh, at the Universidade Aberta, the, the Portuguese Open University, we have a research group on computer arts and creative media. And this group started uh, in March 2014, so it's uh, now uh, five years five years old. And uh, the human resources are this. Uh, Miriam Tavares from uh, University of Algarve is the, the director of the, the center. My colleague Aderit Marcos from Aberta is the coordinator of the research yeah. group. We have uh, about 34 integrated members and uh, 97 collaborating yeah. members, more or less. Yeah. The objectives of this, of, of this research center and the research group in digital arts is uh, to create new user experiments and to develop some innovation in the arts, culture and uh, social and user scenarios. So, so as you can see, we are in the areas of arts, technology, culture, entertainment and education. This is a bit of a change from my own research, which has been in distance open and distance learning and now has shifted a little bit to the arts so the technology media uh, in the, uh, the distance learning environment. So our objectives of the, the research is basically to get a, become an international reference in these areas. We also want to, to, to have a role in multidisciplinary research as a driver of our work and uh, Structure, structuring our networks. Uh, we also want to create uh, communities of practice and open innovation. We have been doing now for five years. We have reached uh, up to South America, China. Uh, we have partners across Europe. And uh, our research and the PhD program has uh, different partners, very par many partnerships across Europe and the world. Um, the objectives are, as I said, international links uh, to advance the study activities. Uh, we had a master's program that is no longer uh, working, but the PhD is now the, the main the main objective. And uh, we are also we also intend to create a world class repository repository of digital media uh, storytelling. Uh, artifacts, games, etc. Et this is just a context so that you you have an idea of of where this PhD program fits in. Uh, research activities, for example, to prototype new computer-based uh, RTC concepts. Our PhD students and researchers have to develop uh, artifacts, then deploy computer-based artifacts in the real world with, through events, uh, exhibitions, uh, in museums, and in, in other cultural centers, um, and also to, de to develop some innovation and in terms of design and uh, education, entertainment, uh, so that there is some space, some space for reflection, experimentation, and exchange of ideas. This is basic philosophy of what we are doing. So the, the advanced studies program of this research group was uh, is still the, the, the doctorate in digital media arts um, and the master program, which in graphic and audiovisual expression, which is not uh, working at the moment. Uh, we are uh, reformulating and changing this, and we are trying to, to to do some innovation. This is something that we never done before in an open uh, university, because as you can see, uh, open learning is more about e-learning and distance uh, distance media for learning, and now we have a, a kind of blended learning that has to support uh, digital media arts. So uh, what we have is a two-year study plan of online instruction, basically learning with activities uh, depending on the kinds of our units. And then uh, third year for thesis writing as usual in any PhD program. 
But the, the, the difference here is that there is each year a one week residential program with workshops, classes, art installations, video presentations, and, and special events, uh, other invited artists. So these uh, face to face uh, sessions for one week every year uh, are a must and are important for the students. Uh, here you have an uh, image on the left. A student is presenting his work to the colleagues and the teachers. Uh, on the right, there is an installation, uh, art installation with video. And there was also performative arts that are not shown here uh, in this picture. Uh, here, the, one of the students, uh, Mario, is uh, showing in a public event. The, the work is done with the sensors and the computer graphics. In this case, another uh, student, uh, now she's also a professor, she's showing the, um, the work on textiles. She's, she had implemented digital uh, LED uh, media into the textile of, of clothing. That was part of her research. Uh, in this case, we have Rudolfo, another student, who has created the video mapping in a chapel. And uh, all the... the yeah rituals and the elements of the chapel were flying around uh, showing us uh, a message that he was trying to convey. Uh, we also have digital games, for example, this one uh, traveling across the Algarve and identifying uh, different cities. Um, this is another example of uh, Jose Gomes and, uh, and another student, Cristina Gomes, uh, who created uh, augmented reality for music teaching so that the, the smartphone can read the score, the music score, play the music, and show some extra information on the printed material that is used for, for teaching. So this was also part of their, uh, their PhD research. Uh, this is an area uh, I'm now researching with, uh, with some students, and I'm supervising some of them in transmedia storytelling. Uh, which is, uh, as, you, as you might know, uh, conveying stories across different media, you know, integrated way, step by step, uh, building interest with some dramatic action and creating a, a new language, if you want. Uh, in one specific case, a student of mine is, is now uh, creating teaching materials for English as a foreign language for Portuguese students. And uh, she creates stories with comics, online co inter interactive comics, and, um, and, uh, and well, this is part of her research as well. She's going to, to have a viva very, very soon. Uh, another project of students within this, uh, master, this uh, PhD program, uh, e-books uh, which are interactive and can have games inside. And these are multimedia uh, e-books that can be used for teaching, um, in this case, ma mathematics, the history of maths. And uh, this is a Brazilian student who finished just recently his, uh, his PhD research. And uh, of course, all of these materials that come out of the, of the digital media arts program uh, have to have a uh, kind of sharing, uh, a very shareable um, license. So we are using Creative Commons and, and try to share as much as possible. The, 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 the doctorate program is also linked to international events. For example, Artec 2012 that I chaired in the University of Algarve. Uh, and more recently, last year, Artefacto in Lisbon. It was the first conference um, about digital media arts, providing uh, the idea of the artifact, the digital artifact, and also the, the Artec 2017 in Macau in China. And we are now uh, branching with some partners in, in Macau, which is now part of China, and uh, with the University of St. Joseph in, in Macau. Um, other exhibitions, we are also, uh, we have common, very conventional exhibitions where students can show printed or developed uh, materials in other media, as well as book publishing and uh, across media platform. Uh, in this case, the, the media platform shows off uh, different kinds of work in audio, video, animations, uh, even games, you name it. And then the links, if you want to check out some of this, uh, of this media and some of the work, 
the, this is these are some of the of the links that you can use. I would like to show now a video. I think I've got some time. Is that correct? Can I use yeah, uh, yeah. three four yeah, minutes? Go on. Right. Yes, of course. Let me open a, a window and see if I can get this video. Yeah, let's play. see if it works. All right. There we go. Great. Okay, uh, I think I think I'm stopping here. Otherwise, it's more of the same. Um, as you can see, uh, for teaching digital media arts, it has to be blended learning. We cannot just teach this online. Uh, online is one part of it. Uh, students can receive all the technical support, can study the, the, the subject matter and all the different theories and methods. But then they have to uh, implement. They have to experiment. Uh, with the materials and, and, and build the, the artifacts. So uh, I think I gave you a, an idea of what we are trying to do and how in distance learning we can also have this uh, blended, learning, bl blended learning option for the media arts. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Jose, and also sorry for the delay in your presentation. I think it's uh, quite interesting, really, and quite nice uh, to have um, Dante, uh, as, you, as you have said, these opportunities that uh, online and distance education students can have in their own places to go and do face-to-face uh, -face things under a blended learning approach. So uh, maybe you have also some suggestions or, or comments about Jose's presentation. We will also check, I think uh, EADTU is going to see if the recordings of these two sessions are fine or not. 
And if they are not, um, maybe we will ask you to record your own presentation just to upload a good one, so uh, everyone can enjoy and 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 watch again the presentation or watch uh, it for the first time but, uh, in good conditions. So if you have uh, some questions or something for Jose, please go on. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you as well. Okay, it seems there are no other... Yeah, you're on. And it's waiting. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we thank, uh, we thank you, you all in for the session. And uh, I think we have had a uh, wide approach to different ways and perspectives of how to use blended learning from a local center, from a flip uh, teaching, from a huge university, uh, from a doctorate um, a grade in, in, and how to make use of these face-to-face uh, -face resources. So I think it's, uh, it has been quite nice and quite interesting to, to have all these perspectives. So thank you very much. And, um, well, I remind you that tomorrow we have the third session and it will be a discussion panel with great, great panelists and uh, we will have some like, uh, questions to, to post to them and to see what they think about the uh, present and future of blended learning. So we finish here and thank you very much for being with us uh, all the session in spite of the technical uh, problems you have in there. So thank you very much.